disjointed and fractious early medieval period, life in Western Europe began to settle down to the point where large-scale building began to happen on a more widespread scale around the end of the first millennium. Romanesque art, which was created between about 1050 and 1200 CE, was the first movement in European art history to be named after an artistic style since the classical period. All medieval art styles preceding it were named for the cultures that created them. Romanesque was named for the features that harken back to Roman art and architecture. Stone sculpture and the use of arches, growing vaults, and engaged columns. Most remarkable about the Romanesque period were the programs of monumental stone sculpture and architecture that had not been seen since 500 years prior at the end of the Roman Empire. Massive stone churches with ornate sculptures decorating the entrances were built, particularly in France. This period saw the emergence of tourism as faithful Christians went on pilgrimages to pay homage to saints, many of whom had relics housed in these churches. To the pious, a journey to visit a saint's relics in a house of God was a once-in-a-lifetime spiritual experience. The rapturous wonder experienced by the faithful as they entered a pilgrimage church must have been truly otherworldly. One of the main features of Romanesque churches that contributed to this feeling of being transported into a spiritual realm were the doors of the church called portals. These are ornate sculptural works in themselves covered in biblical iconography. They contributed to the experience of being transported from the mundane world to the spiritual realm. The tympanum, a semicircular structure above the portal, signified to the traveler that they were entering the domain of Christ. In this video, we will look at two important tympanum sculptures from the Abbey Church of St. Foy in Conk, France, and the Abbey Church of St. Pierre in Moissac, France. While they are located close to each other and were made within a few decades of each other, they have some interesting differences that indicate some of the uniqueness of artwork from this period. Construction of the Abbey Church of St. Foy in Conk, France began in the year 1050 near the beginning of the Romanesque period. It contains the relic remains of St. Faith, a 12-year-old girl who was martyred by the Romans during the end of the Roman Empire, and pilgrims traveled from far and wide to receive the blessings of St. Faith. The tympanum of the portal of St. Foy depicts a common theme for portal sculpture, the Last Judgment. It serves as a warning to all who enter of the dangers of turning away from the Word of God. Figures on the sculpture are basically arranged into three registers, with Christ in the center of all, meeting out judgment to the righteous and the wicked. To Christ's left are the damned, being tormented by demons and fed to the beasts of hell. The torture of hell can be seen in the twisted and chaotic manner that figures are shown. To the lower right of Christ are the righteous, who stand in neat rows beneath an arcade, prepared to receive their righteous place in heaven. The symbolism of right and left are significant, as visitors to the church would enter to the right under demons and lost souls of hell, and emerge on the left under the saved followers of Christ. The transformative aspect of visiting the church is reflected by the intricate statues above the entrance. Another famous tympanum sculpture can be found on the portal of the Abbey Church of St. Pierre in Moissac, France. The church was constructed slightly later, between 1115 and 1130, and has a more ambitious sculptural program adorning the portal. The center dividing the two doors, called a trumeau, is plain on the church at St. Foy, but on the church at St. Pierre, three of the four sides are decorated. The front shows four lions, fierce guardians of the sacred space. The east side of the Jumeau shows a large sculpture of an Old Testament prophet, either Jeremiah or Isaiah. The west side features St. Paul from the New Testament. The placement of these figures is intentional, as Isaiah faces sculptures on the wall next to the portal showing scenes from the Old Testament, and St. Paul on the west side is placed next to scenes from the New Testament. Showing the two parts of the Bible next to each other in this way symbolizes the fulfillment of the Law of Moses. Presiding over these intricate sculptures is the tympanum sculpture above the lintel, showing Christ in another common theme of Romanesque tympanum sculpture, Maestas Domini, or Christ in Majesty. The depiction of Christ is based on a passage from Revelation 4.2-4.7, describing Christ in his glory of the second coming. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And round the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And before the throne there was a sea of glass unto a crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round the throne were four beasts. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast was like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. In the tympanum of the St. Pierre Church, the four evangelical beasts of the Bible surround Christ as he is enthroned in heaven. 
The four beasts, who are actually three animals and one winged man, are symbolic of the, evan the evangelists who wrote the Bible. Below are 24 seated elders who crane their necks to gaze upon Christ. Directly outside of the evangelical beasts are elongated angelic figures holding scrolls. Weary pilgrims traveling the Camino Santiago would have been greeted by this glorious vision of salvation. The intricate sculpture of the tympanum at St. Pierre at Mossack um, inspired me to create my own rendition of the tympanum sculpture from one of my leftover Amazon boxes. Obviously, this is a simplified, abstracted version of the original. Um, I was inspired by the intricacy of the design, which obviously didn't make it to this version, but I like to hold out hope that I'll be able to create some evangelical beasts over here someday, or the Council of Elders at the bottom. Um, I was really inspired by how the um, archivolts are made up by voussoirs with individually carved floral designs. Um, you know, this is like the minimalist version of all that. Um, but I loved studying the piece and um, in Romanesque portal sculpture in general, I'm really drawn to the way the archivolts emanate outward from the tympanum and emphasize the sculpture inside it. Uh, it makes the viewer feel as though they are being pulled into another dimension, which along with the biblical imagery in the tympanum is transcendent and otherworldly.